to start by asking you to first talk about yourself a little bit. Uh, tell me about your job, your family, um, where you grew up, anything else that you think is relevant to that. Excellent. Well, thank you for having me today. Um, basically, I grew up in Memphis, Tennessee most of my life, and I came to Missouri about a year and a half ago. And I came here for work. I'm a professional web developer. I work for Simcoe Incorporated right here in Columbia. And we manufacture air quality control devices and like ductwork and desiccant wheels, you know, for indoor air environments. So I do the web development and design there, manage uh, information technology systems. And those are skills that would directly relate to the role of Secretary of State as far as records archiving goes and ensuring that all the you know the records in the state library and any kind of proceedings are always available to the public and that they're going to be backed up securely. And that's something that's really important to look for in addition to just being fair to the public and making everything available. All right, you, you mentioned um, you know being able to back up these records the Secretary of State and that's sort of helping you uh, what other experience do you have that will help prepare you for the job of Secretary of State? Well, I'm active in the Missouri Libertarian Party. I've grown up, you know, active in the community and active in politics. I serve here in Columbia on the Internet or the Citizens Internet Advisory Group, which is, you know, a committee that uh, advises the City Council on its use of information technology and you know I was active I'm an Eagle Scout so I've been active you know doing community service projects in every community I've lived in you know since as far as I can remember and so that's always an awesome thing and I hope to be able to continue my service to the community in the role of Secretary of State. Now let's talk a little bit about being a third party candidate as you mentioned you're libertarian what what are some of the difficulties that you face as a third party candidate? Well, a lot of times, what people, you know, they, they hear that you're a third party and they assume that that's the only, the only reason to vote for you is because they feel the need to throw away their vote. And I try to emphasize and make people realize that really the Republicans and the Democrats, nobody owns your vote. Um, when you say that we pull votes away from one party or the other, it's not true because they're votes that we rightfully earn. And I think the biggest struggle is overcoming the two-party system as a whole. Uh, I've got a number of proposals and ideas that I hope to combat, you know, the mindset of voting for the lesser of two evils, uh, including putting a nota on the ballot, which is a none of the above option, because there's a lot of people that they don't vote for somebody, they're voting against somebody. And I'd like to see that change, and that's one of the things I want to implement. And also, uh, People think that, that throwing the vote away, I think that's what they're doing. But if we had proportional representation, which is another proposal that I'm making, then every minority group is going to have their voice. They'll get assigned a certain percentage of seats in the you know, Missouri Congress based upon the percentage of votes for that particular party. And so I hope to you know, increase the minority viewpoints because well, there's obviously, they need to be represented as well. They are still paying citizens, pay their taxes, and yet the, those opinions aren't being heard at the state level. I want to get into some of the issues facing the Secretary of State. What do you feel is the most challenging issue that you would face if you're elected to the position? Well, I think one of the things that the Secretary of State right now is currently facing is uh, we're having to find ways to fight voter fraud without infringing on a person's ability and right to vote. And uh, one of my proposed ideas is that we do implement a voter ID requirement so that we can ensure the integrity and fairness of the elections. But understanding that people can't afford a state ID, it's important that the state provides um, people that can't afford them with the ID or allows acceptance of other photo IDs, including student IDs or employer IDs that are locally recognized. And the other major problem is just not finding enough poll, poll worker, workers. Then what we need to do is 
we need to encourage students to get active and participate in the election process. How do your um, how do your views differ from your opponents? Well, I think the one that most people immediately point out is the voter ID issue. But the biggest change that I'm going to make is that you're not going to see ballot initiatives written in an unfair language. I'm not a member of the Republican Party, and I'm not a member of the Democrat Party. So the ballot language that I would approve wouldn't be biased towards either major party. And it's where the intention is that ballot initiatives are supposed to describe what the bill does. It's not supposed to be worded in such a way that it sways signatures to be added or not added based on the Secretary of State's current opinion. And Robin Carnahan's been sued multiple times over the writing of her ballot language. And I can assure you, with the third party in office, you're not going to find that. All right. What do you see, and maybe we've talked about this a little bit, um, but what do you see as the primary role for the Secretary of State? Well, first and foremost, the Secretary of State needs to ensure that the elections are fair and that they're free of fraud. Um, and there are other roles, including affixing the state seal on the state documents and ensuring that the records are there. But nothing else matters if our elections aren't fair. That's the basis of any democracy. All right, and, and how would you how would you go about making those those things that you said making those elections fair so that there is no fraud? Well, in addition to a ID requirement, I believe it's important that as we move forward and we see more and more electronic voting voting happening, that we need to be sure that there's always a paper trail. Uh, currently in in Missouri, all of our voting machines produce a paper receipt so that it can be verified or audited later on uh, and show that there weren't mechanical malfunctions with the machine. And a lot of people don't realize that the Libertarian Party had two members sitting on a committee with the current Secretary of State and were largely you know, the cause of that being implemented. And so it's those kinds of changes that the Libertarian Party is pushing for, and it's those kinds of changes that I would make to ensure that we had fair elections. You've talked a lot about some of the some of the issues that are important to you, some of the things you would do if you were elected to that position of Secretary of State. But is there an issue that we haven't talked about yet that isn't on anyone else's radar that you think is important and needs to be addressed, aside from what you've already mentioned here today? Well, absolutely. Uh, one of the important you know legis pieces of legislation that went through in the federal government was the Real ID Act. And that's a very scary idea that we would have one national ID that would have to be presented, you know, basically to enter a federal building, to board a plane, to cross borders. And the same thing, I'm scared that those powers are going to be crossed over into our elections. And if we do implement a Voter ID Act, we need to keep the federal government out of it. We need to keep them out of our elections completely because the power of holding elections lies in the state. And so I think that we need to be focusing on protecting the rights of the state. If the federal government is um, a concern as far as getting in, involved in the election, how do you ensure that they're kept out? Well, there's been several states already that have passed bills uh, just stating simply that they're not going to accept unconstitutional laws. Oklahoma recently made a broad argument for that, and other states have passed individual ones uh, related just to the Real ID Act. And I think that Missouri, now we have a non-binding proposal that's passed in the House, but we need to have an actual legislation on the books that says that we will not implement Real ID in the state of Missouri. All right, is there anything else you'd like to add that I haven't already asked you about? Well, I just want to emphasize the importance of having a third party in the head of elections. I mean, the Secretary of State oversees the elections, and so regardless of whether you're a Democrat or you're a Republican, uh, you should really see the importance of having an independent mind overseeing the election process. All right, thank you very much for joining me. I appreciate you coming into the studio and talking with me for a little while. Excellent. Well, I appreciate it. Thank you very much.